Hello, my name is Dominic Underhallhouse and welcome back to another episode of Moonbreaker. In the last episode we tried using our new team that we've been creating. So it's basically it's focused around movement and AoE attacks. We've gone for Zax Jakar as the captain because using the sleeper mines to sort of direct people in different directions, gravity disc to help pull people in. Seems like a, you know, a really synergistic option there with push target when he hits them as well being really useful. So we've got things that move other units like crankbait, we've got chuck and co, mcquarney thicket we haven't you haven't played with yet, uh, snarling to immobilize and it was i think that's pretty much it. Oh, we're also using the uh, the sentinel, aegis sentinel to block basically. So it's immobile but with armor and block and 12 wounds, really useful for just like blocking part of that you know, part of that map off and you know, corralling people where we want to. The one thing we're looking at at the moment is we tried Rickety Backfire, but given that he only has 5 wounds and deals 3 damage to himself most of the time, it honestly just didn't feel right. It felt really, really difficult to uh, like to get the benefit of it. It just seemed, it just seemed really inefficient. I mean, we just we paid all those points for something that ended up not doing anything. Uh, end up doing as much damage to himself as he did to other people. So he hit himself once and hit the opponent once, but if you're not getting AoE, it's really not quite worth it. Now I'm curious as to whether Amplifier Bite or... So it's plus one attack, so that I'm assuming probably doesn't affect damage from abilities, so that's not going to be too relevant what we want, because a lot of our things are going to be ability based. So where do we look at? So we did consider Jailbreak as an option, I think that's still an option here. Because Jailbreaker's got the option of uh, touching rivals are immobilized, and he's kind of tanky. Not hugely, but he's got eight wounds or eight life, whatever it's called in this game. And I think that might be our choice, because one of the things that we don't want is people running towards us. So if we can sacrifice Jailbreak for a couple of turns of safety there, that would be excellent. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anything else that I really fancy. We could go for something healing based, like Stitchy McPatchy or Tona Mystic Manteo, but Again, that only heals your own captain. I think I'm going to try Jailbreak. I really, if I'm right, is it, was his name Angry Jailbreak? See, it doesn't say that anymore. In the tutorial, it was called Angry Jailbreak, and that really made me laugh. So I thought that was going to be his name throughout. I think this is the list we're going to go with. Use him for a bit more move blocking, especially alongside Snarling. So we're going to save this, and we're going to jump straight into another PvP game. So, versus player, Zax Jakar, AoE movement, so here's the full list, we've just seen it a moment ago. Do you know what, I'm tr I've just realised now, these three have got little icons over their, um, over their sort of health bars, showing that they've got armour, which I think is a really nice touch. I mean, I don't, they obviously don't have the ability to do that for every single different type of, you know, attack or option, things like that, but it's really interesting knowing that we've actually managed to pick three units that have got armor on them as well, so that's going to help us have a bit more of a front line. So we're going to dive straight in, see what we come up against. Again, we're still experimenting with the assists and what different things you want to choose. So I'm curious as to what our options are going to be. We did have a... Uh, we had the Vortex last time, which I actually think was really nice. It ended up sort of pulling a few things together into AoE attacks. I think that's probably slightly more useful than the Disruption, but... The Disruption's got other effects, so like Disruption is better at splitting our characters away from theirs. So, for instance, they had the uh, they had Angry Jailbreak, I think it was, in the last great game or something similar, where it was you know, causing immobilization when they're in range of us. So being able to push that away, you know, re relieved a bit of that pressure on us. So we're going to see what we come across this time. Hopefully it's going to be another interesting matchup, because we've, uh, I think, again, come across another one that wasn't a uh, the pre-made Exterior deck. Is that his name? Exterior? I'm still remembering all the names. I'm still getting used to it. I'm gradually getting there, but. Okay. Yes, Exterior, I was right. Plus, I still love that model. So, Zaxxer Car is one that I'm going to probably wait a while before painting. Okay, so. I mean, Orbital Strike and Disruptor Beam seems excellent for what we want. I really like this look of Stimburst for other people. Escape Hatch seems fun, but the taking damage and Vortex Beam is a little bit risky, but it does save us some Cinder. But I think let's just go with this. Opponent's turn first, so... I forget nothing. They've got... yeah, so they are the ranged one. They're probably going to be moving towards us. Do we have anything early? To 
Antonio we can do on turn two or Snarling. It's probably Snarling because Snarling doesn't require any Cinder to use. We are looking at this. We're gonna need to reinforce fairly early on because we've got three activated ability, three casters. And they're level 28. This person has spent so much time on this game. They must have been just churning through games here. So we've got an option of moving here. Um, looking at what we've got, we've got Snarling for next turn, so I'm not going to use my uh, Sleeper Mine, even though it would be useful. We'll try and get the two damage here. No, it was only 54% chance, so that's fine. This is not what I wanted to see, though. So we're probably going to move behind here. Is that going to be Stitchy? Yeah, Stitchy McPatchy seems exactly the sort of thing that would turn up here. So we've got 72 here, 37 there. So, is there a way where I can get a higher chance there? No, I think I'm actually, just for ease, I'm still going to shoot the front target. Missed anyway. We're going to move back over here. And then we're going to bring in the Snarling, basically as far over with this way as possible. And to be honest, just to buy us a little more time, I think I'm going to try and just move them as far back as possible as well. Use our Vortex. A disruptor rather. And push them away. Give us a bit more time. They're obviously going to be able to heal if they want to and use their time that way. We've got nothing else to do here. And we've got three in the next turn so we can bring down something else. And Snarling can start irritating things basically. Because they've got no range here. We do. So yeah, it looks like they've healed. Need a moment to take all so we're going to move over here, Still got it. see what our ranged options are, 63% or 28%, so we we'll just, yeah, we got a damage done, again go for the higher percentage here, perfect, result. and we're going to move back over this way, and then we're going to bring in, you know what, we'd have 7 if we left this turn. So it doesn't make a difference, we might as well bring in Detonia. So she's going to stay a little bit closer up there. Beautiful day for because this way, we, either way, we don't have enough to do two things next turn. Zach Chikawa could... I mean, I don't really think I need to do anything. We've got Orbital Strike and Disruptor Beam available next turn. That's solid. We can push them back and then also deal three damage to the units. So depending on what they place first. Okay, that I feel is the wrong way around of doing things. We might actually be able to take out Sitchi Apache here. Yeah, so with only two units out, we're going to use Orbital Strike first. And we're going to see if we can actually take out Sitchi Apache pretty Breaking rapidly. So we've only got a 60% chance there, but what if we do this? I think this is going to be a, a useful way of potentially just... See, that gives us 81. So here it gives us almost no minus. There we go. Would a grenade help? And then oh, we could launch. This only does one damage, so I actually think here I'm going to reinforce. Ready to mingle. I'm going to move here and then just lob an explosive over here to get rid of Stitchy Apache. And then style. we'll move here. We'll go for a range shot just in case we can get damage off. 50% chance. It would be good if we did. No, but that's fine. So we still don't know what their abilities are, so they're probably going to be fairly big ones. This is going to be where we really escape Hatch Yep, so they're just going to deploy something. Okay, they've got their Sentinel. That's what they were saving for, so they're probably going to deploy something else as well. It's going to be a big turn for them. But we can probably ruin their line of sight on that. Because that's the one that does the, uh, yeah, three damage to all units in an area. Okay, we'll see. Because next turn we can bring in our own Sentinel or Florio Lancer, but I think Florio Lancer is the one we want here. So. Talking to me. Oh, we could also just Gravity Disc and pull things back that way slightly. And then move, because again, they've got more melee. And they've their healing's gone, and we can just draw this out. So, okay, I think it depends on 
the chance of hitting here. So if this hits, it misses. Of course it does. So we're going to hide back here. Okay, I need to be right back. Okay, so we've come back. This isn't good news for us. We just had to miss probably an entire cycle of turns because someone came to the door. So, let's see what it looks like. They're still using this. They've got... Okay, so they haven't actually bought out that much more. We've got loads of uh, things now. I feel like Crankbait is going to be useful. Sentinel and Florio Lancer will be good. I think... Okay. Let's try try getting our snarling out to shoot Exterior again. Okay, we've got that this time. Uh, can we get that into range? No, so. We're going to bring in Florio Lancer, I think. Probably over here, so we can start dealing with this. We're going to move up here and just get a nice shot. Uh, maybe a lob. Can we bring another unit in? We can bring Crankbait in. So I'm the Cinder Whisperer. We're gonna range attack here. How's the moon look down there? Uh, we can. Do you know what? Let's. Is it three for Crankbait? Yeah. So Crankbait can come in over here. Can't we'll bring in a sleeper see. mine over here, Nothing and then we're actually gonna just here? send everyone away with the disruptor beam. I think this is a great angle for it. Excellent. I'm happy with that. So, we should be significantly behind because we've obviously missed an entire turn. I was considering on just maybe even scrapping this video, uh, given that I had to miss a bit and trying again, but if this works out, I'm very happy. I'm still not quite sure how the sleeper mine activates. I think it's either at the beginning of a turn or if it comes into full base contact with something. So we've got Orbital Strike next turn, so that's going to be what we're aiming for here. We're probably going to use our commander to do a gravity pull. In the bubble, what's... Oh, so it kills the mine. I mean, they use some Cinder for that, that's fine. I don't think the bombardment's quite big enough for these, but that Nectivine needs to die. So... We're going to move over here. We're going to try shooting the Nectarine. Okay, it missed. That's fine. I'm going to move over here and try and grappling chain it. There we go. So then we can use... Okay, so this needs to move first. A Lob explosive. Yeah, we can do that. Order up. An elegant smoke and we can move up here to try and get another higher chance range attack over there. Excellent, we got what we wanted. We can't layer this out yet. We have got our Florio Lancer, who is going to bombard both of these. There we go, perfect. Okay, this is going well for us. Uh, Florio can move. But as it stands, I don't think he needs to. This is kind of where we want to be. So they've got their reinforce again. Their escape hatch, sorry. Next turn, we've got orbital strike and disruptor beam. 
So it looks like we might be doing a big AoE next turn. Okay, yeah, we're definitely doing a big AoE because we'll have Disruptor Beam, we'll have the Gravity... Uh, where's our leader gone? There we go. Gravity Disc as well. We've got Crankbait. We can probably find a nice little circle here if we maybe even push back the Nectarvine. We can get a double AoE going on multiple units. Or... Okay, oh. Oh wow, I didn't. I thought that would have a bigger minus to hit over there. Okay, I'm in trouble now. That was a terrible positioning. Oh dear. Yep, yeah, Solio protects himself, that's fine. Healing no one. Okay, so. How do we look for Orbital Strike? How big is it? As it stands, we can get three of them. This is my jam! It might even be worth actually just. Moving Crankbait over here, grappling chaining the Nectarine out of the way. Would a grenade help? Yeah, so we're going to go for... Okay, so we are going to move over here. Let's add some texture. Uh, lob an explosive at these two. We're going to go for an Orbital Strike on all three. We're going to go for a ranged attack here, which did miss. Uh, we will go for another ranged attack there. We are then going to be moving over here, moving back here. And who's left? Oh, hey. I, of course, got Bombard. So Bombard can get the triple hit. Incoming! Excellent. Melee here. We'll just leave that, because Bombard's probably got us sorted next turn. I think we've won this. I think we've come back from almost nothing. What's the range on Bombard? It's most of the map. That's great. I thought it was, but... Yeah, so if we need to, we can... Because Florio can move. So they're going for Corrosive Particles. They can do a lot of damage over here. Okay, so they only hit one unit there. What's... Again, I don't think they can get out of range. I think we've got this. We just need to poke around. So they're putting on the thing. Is this for ignore the first damage? Yes. So I think we've got a quite an easy call here. We're going to move Crankbait up here, pull it. Does Ursix? Ursix doesn't have anything. I honestly just think we've got this with a, a Bombard after we plink one damage off of here. So if we've got anything else, not literally plink, we didn't have plink this game. So what is this one? Turn. Okay, so this has to be this turn basically. So, can I get a good angle on this? My 17 is the best we can get. So let's go for minus 17. Can we get... Let's not worry about that. Let's just do our range tax. If we take this off... Perfect. So then this... Can we get the bombard there now? No, so we do need to move. Smooth! Cinder powered! Can we get one by there? No, we can. Excellent. So if not, we had the disruptor beam. We've got it. I wasn't expecting that at all after taking a turn off. But we managed to kite them around. We kept their Nectarvine away from things. Genuinely, I think being able to just root their uh, uh, Exterior into place multiple times was really, really useful. So really happy with that. I genuinely did not expect to uh, pull a win out of there. And uh, yeah. Genuinely, what a good uh, what a good game that ended up being. So, does this take us over the edge to our next one? I think it should do. And given that this, uh, yeah, there we go. We finally got level two. That guy was level like twenty something. That's so many rewards. He must have played hours and hours on that first weekend. Like, I think we played a reasonable amount. But like I say, if I'm recording it all, I can't get as many hours in. But we've got our first reward. 
who knows, maybe this playtest weekend we'll get to test the booster pack out. I don't know if it opens anything. If it does, absolutely going to be recording that. But we've got... So what happens if you get the unit mastery up? I'm assuming that takes you from common to uncommon, maybe? So Florio Lance is on their way up there. And I think suppose before anything else... There you go, claim the Butcher's Crest. I think we absolutely have to go in here, go to the roster, given that these guys are the one that earned it, get their new Butcher's Crest. And this, to be fair, through Fire and Flames, is a, a little bit more thematic for what we've got at the moment anyway. So we've made it a little bit further on the season track. That guy was like 28-ish, I want to say. So we're looking at... Ooh, very close to a switchback paint scheme. I wouldn't mind getting a new paint scheme switch back. These lightning bolts at the bottom remind me of the uh, the Silent King model from Warhammer 40k. These are what I want, the little the intro crashes. Intro? 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 Intro crashes. Would be awesome. That's an like Extilio paint scheme. Is that Deadeye paint scheme? So we'd use Deadeye. And then a Florio Lancer paint scheme as well. These are the ones we're sort of working to now. Excellent. Well, I'm really happy with that went. Sorry about the little departure midway through the game. Hopefully you couldn't hear too much of a, a pointless conversation outside of the uh, the room. It'd be great to hear from you if you've got any questions, comments, queries, anything whatsoever. If you feel like it, that subscribe button and hit you. Anything like that really does you brighten my day. It's something that I, yeah, encourages me every single time I see it. Other than that, have a good day.